Hey guys, the objective of this video is to talk a bit about the theory on flexural stiffness and then we're going to be finding the flexural stiffness of our beams and columns. So, just to put our problem in a bit of perspective, we've seen the plan of our building, it looks like this, but the section through our building is going to look something like this. Okay, so we have a frame structure that looks like that. Now, what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be looking at a certain level. Okay, so this is, say, floor 6 or 7 or whatever it is. We're going to be looking at a certain floor and we're going to be wanting to distribute the moment. So we're going to be wanting to, we're going to be forming a diagram something like this, okay? With different low cases, and this is the moment distribution across the floor, okay? So if we take out a floor, so this floor and its corresponding columns, so I'm taking that out along grid line two. So we have a structure like that. So along grid line two is that grid line. In section, it looks like this. So there's an eight, 10, and eight meter span and we have the corresponding columns. And what we do is, is we take, we extract that section out and we make the columns fixed on either ends, okay? So now what part of this moment distribution process, which we're gonna to get to later on, to develop a bending moment diagram envelope like this, is we need to know the stiffness of our members, all right? So I'm, just, I'm not gonna go through the derivation, I'm just gonna talk a bit about what it means. So what we might be familiar with is the axial stiffness. So we're not dealing with axial stiffness um, in this process, but I'm just gonna help us, it's gonna help set up the um, flexural stiffness. So the axial stiffness looks like this. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Hooke's law, which is that the force is equal to the spring stiffness times the displacement, okay? So let's say we have a column and we apply a load P. Now, what's gonna happen is this column is going to shrink, it's gonna reduce in size by a distance X. Okay, so what we can say is that the force is equal to the stiffness, K, the spring stiffness, times the displacement. Now for axial, for axial loading, the spring stiffness, K, is equal to AE on L. So we call this the axial stiffness. Now we're not using this in, in, um, in this for, for the moment distribution. I just wanted to, to show you this because I think this is something you guys might be familiar with. What you might not be familiar with is the flexural or rotational stiffness. So similarly, we have P equals KX, so there's a similar rule, which is equals K theta, which is the moment